I have never been more intimidated by a game franchise than Resident Evil. The achievement list is terrifying if you've never played a survival horror game. I did one playthrough of 7 and 2, but I didn't get into them. It was disingenuous. I got them as gifts. So why do people like Resident Evil so much? Why am I going to enjoy this game beating it without saving? Beating it with a knife only? Invisible enemy mode? Like seriously? Especially when I'm told that the first Resident Evil sucks and I should move on to later games in the franchise. I am so pleased to announce that I was so wrong. This is the journey of how Resident Evil's 44 achievements made me absolutely love survival horror. Resident Evil. This is going to require six playthroughs. Yes, you heard me right, six. The game starts out and I'm in a mansion. What do, uh, what do I do now? I popped a save for good measure at the beginning of the game. And it's a good thing I did because I was trying to kill a zombie with a knife not five minutes later. Bro! Can I not kill this thing? I loaded back my save and found a pistol, but pistols don't help you from pulling keys out of things you should not pull keys out of. This resulted in me dying, but I got an achievement out of it. No, why? Ah! Hey! Achievement unlocked, get used to it. I stumbled around the mansion until I finally made my way to the graveyard, but I couldn't do anything here except pointlessly fill up my inventory space, and that's because I had to go find an arrowhead so I could put it in the tombstone. Randomly traveling through the mansion, I got what must have been a delayed achievement for killing a zombie, and because I didn't manage my inventory well, when I got to the arrowhead, it was full like a Resident Evil noob. And I also didn't know there were storage bins in this game, so I had to reload my save. After making my way back to the graveyard, I came across four statues that require four masks. Almost two hours in, I was wondering how on earth will I ever beat this game in under three hours. But I got a new key so I could explore the mansion further. The second stream in, my chat had enough and told me about the save room. There's a door to the right there. Unknown, you need to calm down. What the fudge are you talking about? A door to the right of where? Oh my gosh. Jeez. This is where I learned that I had unlimited storage. Oh, look at all that inventory space. Next, I went upstairs to grab the dog whistle. Killing the dog and investigating his collar gives me a fake key that I can use to replace the key I took earlier. There's just one problem with this. For lack of better words, I suck at killing the dog. I absolutely suck at killing the stupid dog. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? This is so ridiculous. What the fudge, bro? No harm, no foul. So we shoot in birds. I was aimed like that's just the I, I eventually was able to kill the first dog But as soon as I did the second dog started attacking me I barely grabbed the collar and got out of there with a hair left of hell I was then finally able to replace the real key with the fake one This key allows you to access most of the doors to get the four masks But as a new Resident Evil member, this is daunting I literally have no idea where any of the four masks are But with enough exploring and help from the chat R.I.P. Richard I was able to get to the location with the first mask Mask. In the middle of this room, there's a button with a box locked behind a gate. You have to push these four statues in sequential order before pressing the button because it will release gas if you do it wrong. But of course, I decided that trial and error was the best method, and it would have worked if I pushed the statues in more than halfway. <laughs> I swear to you, I get so aggravated at myself going back and watching this. Uh, <laughs> maybe I didn't push them in all the way. This got me the jewelry box, which when I open will give me the first mask. Now the second mask is behind this door, which I don't have the key for. To get this key, you have to get a music sheet on one side of the mansion, then go back to the other side and combine it with this music note by this piano. This will activate a cutscene with Rebecca, who I really like as a character so far. But as I edit this video, I'm in the process of playing Resident Evil Zero on my stream, so who knows, maybe I'll hate her by the end. This is the Moonlight Sonata. Can you play? What was that? My interpretation is off a little. Bro has zero res. He just roasts her, dude. She makes one mistake and he's like, oh, bro, 
<laughs> wow! After running around the mansion and letting her practice, it opens a secret wall. Here you can replace the crest I picked up at the beginning of the game with the real crest. And if you place the real crest in the original slot, it unlocks the clock. And if you solve this clock puzzle, you get the next key. <laughs> I didn't solve the puzzle, I just did trial and error. Even though the answer was right on the wall next to me. I didn't know I was supposed to go to the door I mentioned earlier, so naturally I wandered around the mansion. Was I starting to enjoy this? No, actually, not at this point. It was officially time for my first boss fight. It went surprisingly well with no deaths. Also, it gave me an achievement for surviving my first encounter with Yawn, which is apparently the snake's name. And it gave me another mask, so I have two out of four now. The remaining two are not difficult to get at all, but oh my gosh, I do not know where I'm going. Are you kidding me, dude? Right around the camera angle. Screw off. Killing a zombie without shooting off his head or burning its body will result in a crimson head spawning. Because I killed one of these crimson heads, it gave me an achievement. Achievement unlocked. Seeing red. I get the next mask for solving a color puzzle, which opens a secret door to the graveyard. Yo, we straight up just got another freaking mask. The last one required me to grab plant food on one side of the mansion and bring it to the other side. I then placed the food inside the water reservoir to kill the plant, which reveals the last mask. I also picked up the fake shotgun on the way, so you know what that means. It means I finally have a weapon that's better than a pistol. Next, I return to the statues and put all four masks on. This spawned the second boss. And I'm not joking, without even reloading my shotgun, he was dead. The bosses in this game are not crazy difficult. I grabbed the pendant in his coffin and got an achievement. Achievement unlocked! Not just any object, so this is as far as 10% of the players made it, less than 10%. This pendant allows you to leave the backside of the mansion, and honestly at this point going forward, the game gets much more linear and easier to figure out. When you first get outside, this gate is locked, but all you have to do is turn these statues to get through. Then I made my way down to this shack where I grabbed the crank and met Lisa Trevor. So I backtracked and used the crank to lower the water. This allowed me to make it to the residence quarter. This area has a lot of back and forth. First thing, I need to grab this book, which is guarded by large spiders. Oh my gosh, what the fudge, man. After that, I need to go grab a key in this bathroom, but every time you run past this stupid hole, a plant grabs you. If only there was a box that you could push over the hole so the plant wouldn't grab you. This key unlocks a bathroom on the other side to grab another key. Then if you go back to where you grab the first key, there's an underground lab. I can assure you the last thing I expected to see in Resident Evil was a shark tank. Something's in the water. Oh, it's a bloody effing shark! There's a pretty fun puzzle sequence that lets you drain the shark tank, so they really weren't that much of a threat. If you push this electrical box in the water, it lets you kill Mother Neptune. And hey, that gave me another achievement. After doing this whole shark tank section, do you know what it gives you? <laughs> another key. This key lets me go back upstairs and open another door. Behind this door, there's a pump that I need to grab. I then use this pump to kill killer bees. This clears the hallway, allowing me to grab another key. <laughs> As I'm editing this video, I realize how ridiculous this all sounds, but stay with me because this game is amazing. The key from the hallway allows me into a room where I can finally use the book I picked up earlier. Here you have to organize the books into a painting. This brings me into the next boss fight. At least that's what I thought until I got snatched up by the plant. But who comes to save the day? This is the Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> That's right, baby. Rebecca's back, and this time you get to play as her. With the objective of saving this useless protagonist. Please don't roast me, Resident Evil fans. I have yet to see Chris in another game. You have to solve a puzzle to figure out how to get inside this door, and then solve another puzzle to figure out how to make a toxin to kill the plant. Once you make this toxin, you go back down to the shark tank and pour it on the plant. This causes the plant to jump into cold water, releasing Chris. This gave me an achievement for saving Chris as Rebecca. But then the plant grows back, and you actually have to fight it this time. <laughs> this was the first boss fight I actually almost died. Really? I'm about to freaking die, man. Oh, thank goodness, dude. And this gave me another achievement for defeating the plant. Achievement unlocked. Herbicide. Alright, I want you to pause this video and guess what killing this plant gives you. If you guess the key, you are correct. <laughs> On your way out, you run into your completely reliable and trusting team leader, Wesker. He tells you to go back to the mansion and keep exploring. We should get a better grip on the situation. No need to question him, I'm off to the mansion. Side note, on your way back, this snake is really hard to dodge. And the annoying thing is, 9 times out of 10, it poisons you. When I got back to the mansion, I came across a hunter. Where's he headed? That's towards me. Oh! 
Oh! I knew that killing one of these would give me an achievement. We're going back, baby. I just want the achievement. Boom, baby! Defeat a hunter. With my new key, I was allowed to access a door upstairs. This took me into a room where I had to push a statue into place, unlocking a secret door. This door had a hole that I had to drop down below. This is where I found another red book. This passageway leads to the basement. Here you can restore the power and use the elevator, which takes you to an area on the other side of the mansion that was previously locked. Here I was able to grab the battery, which I will use later. The next door I was now able to access was the trophy room. All you have to do is turn off the light and stand far enough away to grab these gems out of these trophies eyes if you go downstairs and put the yellow gem in this tiger it will give you a floppy disk this floppy disk is super important for an achievement but i'll explain that later the blue gem gave me shotgun shells i wonder what the red gem does actually if i went to the other side of the mansion there was another door that i wasn't able to access before in here there was a box which if you put the red gem in it gives you a puzzle to solve and once open this gives you another key next my chat let me know that i needed to go back upstairs where I got the dog whistle earlier. Here, Rebecca needed saving this time. I'm here, Rebecca. Don't worry. Oh. Rebecca. Chris. Are you okay? I didn't mean to get you worried. Achievement of love. Save Rebecca from the hunter. After that, I went right back downstairs and used the new key I got from the box. This allows me in a room that gives me half the second pendant, but I still need the crest around it. Heading back to the other side of the mansion, I can now access a door that lets me have my second encounter with Yawn. I shouldn't have stopped. I shouldn't have stopped. That was so stupid, man. Oh, you you little tricky bastard. Let's go, baby! Didn't even sweat. I should title this clip Joker running from Drake's what? This allowed me to grab the blue book, giving me an achievement. It was time to load my inventory with the crank and the battery I mentioned earlier. Out the backside of the mansion, I'm able to load this elevator with the battery. If I then go back and use the crank on the water, it opens up a waterfall. And here goes what I think is the most boring part of the game, which is the tunnels. Right off the bat, I go to one side of the tunnels and grab a new crank. Is there another one? Sucker. Oh, dude, come on. Boy, this is irritating when you can't get away. Are you kidding me? After I'm able to go to the other side and use this new crank to turn the tunnel walls. Here, I'm able to use a flamethrower to defeat a giant spider called Black Tiger. This is a pretty easy boss fight and it gives me an achievement. Past this door, I'm able to push a statue into place, giving me an elevator piece. This allows me to repair the elevator. Down here, I have to push a box onto an elevator, send it to a different part of the shaft, crush the box, and grab the fake flamethrower. Here Lisa Trevor shows up again, but all you have to do is juke her, put the flamethrower on the stand, and walk through the door. This is the end of the tunnels, and there's a box at the end giving me the crest for the second pendant. When you leave the tunnels, you come out by the shed where Lisa Trevor was at earlier. On the way back to the mansion, I grab the first pendant, and it's officially time to enter the last area of the game. Here I get to meet up with my trusted ally, Wesker. This is the last encounter with Lisa Trevor. You quite simply have to push these four concrete cylinders on off. And this opens her mother's tomb and is actually a pretty tragic story. Oh, thank goodness. The end of the poor girl's misery. Let's go, baby! I come across a fountain and open the blue and red book I got earlier, which have two metals in them. If I put these two metals in the fountain, it lowers the water. This unlocks the underground lab. The first thing I find here is another floppy disk. Downstairs, there's a computer, which I entered a few passwords, and this unlocks most of the doors in the lab. When I went back upstairs to the new unlocked door, there was another floppy disk. There was also a panel on the wall to enter a code. This unlocks a secret room giving me another key. Now, do you remember that girl you saw at the beginning of this video? That's Jill and she's been locked in a prison cell this entire playthrough. The only way to free her is by inserting three floppy disks and three computers around the lab. But like I said when I grabbed the floppy disk earlier, this gives you an achievement for freeing her. Chris. Achievement unlocked, baby! Next, I needed to grab an empty capsule and bring it over to the other side of the lab. Here, I can fill it up with explosive juice. And my chat warned me that I shouldn't run. Use the D-pad to walk. 
The D-pad does not work to walk unknown. Look at this, okay? This don't work. This ain't gonna work, all right? I, am dumb. I loved the pre-sequel. That's why he told me to use the D-pad to walk. That's why he told me to use the D-pad to walk. But once I slowly walked to the other side and put the capsule in the generator, then I had to activate the generator, which allowed me to access the elevator. These are the creepiest creatures in the game. And Rebecca shows up for the ending, baby. I saw you in the inner garden. No more following. Just stay with me, kid. That's my plan, sir. Wait, did he just say kid? Let me Google this. Okay, Chris is 23 in this game and Rebecca is 18. Don't be acting like you're so much older than her, Chris. Once I got upstairs, I found out the most shocking news. Chris, you make me proud. Of course, you are one of my men. Thanks. Oh my gosh, Wesker's bad. He then takes it a step too far. Don't. No! I don't know what's worse, that plot twist or how easy he dies. And then the comedy continues with how easy this boss is to kill. That's it? Luckily, Rebecca is still alive because she was wearing a bulletproof vest. There was only one objective left now, and that was to escape the mansion. But it turns out when I put the beacon out for the helicopter, there is another boss fight. Chris! You okay? Yeah. Oh, snap. Why don't you just do something, Chris, instead of stand there? Why don't you attack? Get away from her! You see, this is not gonna work. I'm supposed to get four achievements for beating this first playthrough. Play on very easy, play on easy, and play as Chris. Those three are not missable. However, there is an achievement for finishing the game, saving Rebecca and Jill. So I needed to go back and save. But the second time was much easier. <laughs> yeah! And I got all four achievements for beating the game for the first time. Wow. It's over. I did it. Now that the first playthrough was over, it was time to beat the game again with a knife only this time. So was I enjoying the game yet? The answer is just a little bit. But if I wasn't an achievement hunter, I would have put this game down after the first playthrough, never touched it again, and it would have gone on the record as an okay game. So I'm not allowed to use any defensive items either, it's just me and my knife. The first challenge presented itself when I came across the dog. Yeah, that's a death. There's a way to get him off. There's a way to get him off. I don't know how, what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I pressed all the buttons. I hate the stupid dog park, dude. Let's go, baby. Now, instead of letting Richard die, I'm going to get the serum across the mansion and bring it back to him. This will give me an achievement for saving Richard. However, when I beat this playthrough, I will also get an achievement for not saving anybody. The reason I'm able to get both in this playthrough is because Richard's destiny is to die. R.I.P. Richard. I absolutely breezed through getting all four masks. However, I did die once fighting the Crimson Head. When I got to residence, I learned how to push the box and still got grabbed by the plant. I also took out the plant with a knife only pretty easy. Same thing with Yawn, I'm telling you this achievement is overrated on difficulty. I did find out what the red gem does. <laughs> Yeah, it just fills the den with snakes. After that, I didn't die again until the laboratory. Is that a death? Is he gonna pop off my head? And because I didn't save anybody except Richard, the final boss doesn't spawn. You can literally just leave the mansion. Achieve it unlocked! Every man for himself. That's not the one we want to see. Is that it? Is that it? Oh, finish the game with the- <laughs> Where my first playthrough took me 13 hours, this one only took me 5. This, this is where I really started to like the game. Especially because the next playthrough I got to play as Jill. Let me tell you something, Jill is so much better than Chris in this game. Not only do you have an extra 2 inventory slots, you also have a lockpick, but you can freaking run so much faster. I cannot express to you how small these changes are, but they amplify the game so much. Before we move on, I want to thank the active members of my channel, Heisenberg, who helps out with the thumbnail.
thumbnails. Dan Fitzgerald, that's my dad, guys. Sonic Theory, who has a great YouTube channel, go check him out. Jaytonius, who streams on Twitch. Clax, who helped build my Discord, and Momo, who helps run it. You all are making my dreams a reality, and I can't thank you enough. If you're new to the channel, I didn't start achievement hunting to make content. I've always been an achievement hunter for like 11 or 12 years, and just decided to make content off of that. So make sure you stick around because I have lots coming. I literally want to play every game out there. The third playthrough is mostly rinse and repeat from the first. The biggest objective of this playthrough is to go through every room and pick up every item in the game. For starters, she gets to interact with Barry several times throughout this game. I don't think you see Barry at all with Chris. But because of that, you actually don't need the fake shotgun to get the real one and Barry will save you from the crushing room. If I burn a zombie with gasoline, that'll give me an achievement. And if I burn two zombies at the same time, that'll give me another. This actually kind of took me a few tries. Might be too far. How is that not close enough? Another unbelievable thing about Jill that Chris doesn't have because Chris sucks in this game is the freaking grenade launcher. Like this weapon is a game changer for the next few playthroughs. If you kill the prototype using Jill, you get another achievement. Same for getting the helmet key. Barry. Something about that mansion still bothers me. I think I'll stay here a little longer. Oh really? Something about the mansion still bothers you? Is it the giant plant growing in it or all the zombies? Idiot. Clear. We need to go through that door. Achievement unlocked! The key master! Defeating Yawn? Oh, achievement unlocked! Giant snake got nothing! Let's go! And because I'm 100%ing the map, there's two weapons that I need. You get one for solving this B puzzle and then going outside to the tombstone. The second is when you're fighting Lisa Trevor, if you actually let Barry die because he betrays you, you get to pick up his pistol and it's wicked. That being said, there's an achievement for saving Barry, so I actually saved before this and let him live to get that achievement. Once you get to the lab as Jill, you get another. And with absolutely zero difference in their location, if you get all three floppy disks, you can save Chris this time. Achievement unlocked. Sorry about the wait. <laughs> the first achievement I got at the end of this playthrough was for 100%ing the map and grabbing every item. Next was finishing the game and saving Barry and Chris. Achievement unlocked. I am a star member. The next was for finishing the game as Jill and finishing the game using Jill and Chris at least once. This playthrough lasted a little too long, but was very fulfilling to complete. The next playthrough was the turning point. This is where I went from liking the game to absolutely loving it. Upon finishing this next playthrough, I will get a crazy seven achievements. Two of them are for collecting everything. Two of them are for beating the game. Two of them require you to beat the game in under five hours, but even worse requires you to beat the game in under three Three hours. At the same time, the last thing I'll get for this playthrough is beating it without saving. This means I have to have a perfect run and cannot die. I wouldn't say this achievement is super difficult, but more on the fun side because it forces you to learn the game like never before. I went from not knowing where to go to being able to run from location to location as fast as possible. I did have one little bump in the road. Sound like I'm hitting it and I'm out of head I'm out of heels. Can I not get blasted by acid? What is happening? What is happening? This is literally it. This is the end of the run. Game over. But next stream, I jumped right back in and eventually prevailed, giving me all seven achievements. Alright, I think if I set this down, it's over. Let's go, baby! Oh, I just beat Resident Evil without dying in under three hours. The next playthrough requires me to beat the game on True Survivor. This will give me two achievements, stacking the hard difficulty achievement. The catch with this playthrough is it's annoying, and that's because it doesn't connect your storage bins across the game. The items you put in one stay there. Other than that, this is a pretty standard run through. I didn't struggle too much and got the two achievements. I'd like to tell you the last playthrough on invisible enemy mode, where literally the enemies are invisible, was the hardest part of the game, but in all honesty, it wasn't. I simply knew the game too well at this point for it to be difficult. And when I step back and realize why I didn't like this game, it's because it was too difficult at the beginning. I was simply intimidated by the game, but the achievements forced me to learn the game inside and out, and in doing so, I fell in love with this game. It's a masterpiece from the lightning strikes to the details in every little corner. The developers knew this, which is why when you beat Invisible Enemy Mode, they send you off with a love letter. They understood that they made something special here, and they wanted you to know how thankful they were that you saw it too. And that's why getting every achievement in Resident Evil 1 made me fall in love with survival horror.